Hi everyone, I'm Dale Pinkert. I'm your moderator, host, slash facilitator here in FACE. Happy summer, everybody. Let's have a great summer trading season. Today's the solstice, good time to get started. And Warriors, you know, I've seen a lot of websites before and a lot of them look clean and, you know, they have very good graphics. But, you know, every once in a while you have to say, it's a work of art. And I think that's what our developers under the guidance of Steve Volge have come up with, with the new design for Forex Analytics. Uh, it, we've invested a lot of capital in it. It's because we put you first. We want this to be the only page that you, you have to be on. You could have your charts, you could have a Twitter feed, uh, you could customize it by turning on and off different alerts and links. So, um, very nice website. So, at the minimum, you owe it to yourself to at least get a trial. Okay, you're going to want to get a trial here. It's going to be on the home page. So you get all this for 10 days to learn how to navigate it for a buck. And the timing of this pitch is critical because um, I know that uh, we're going to come up to market rates of people that call themselves competitors. So uh, you get in now, you're grandfathered in for as long as you trade and want to be with us here at Forex Analytics. And then if you're overseas, uh, we have a rebate program through our sponsor, Forest Park FX. Can I please add an option to make the payment via net teller? Oh, well, uh, I'll talk to Steve and Stelios about it. Okay, I'm not sure what the only payment methods are for depositing accounts, to deposit into accounts. Dale, you want to press settings. Click. Oh, okay, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Steve busted me. Uh, anyway, I want to show you. Look at how these balls go around in circles like that. Oh, that's my profile. Steve's typing me. Anyway, like you guys, I'm going to have to get a little bit more familiar with it but it's really beautiful. So check it out, it's a, it's a, one, do, it's a $1 trial. Uh, we have the link up here in the room, okay? And you, if you're overseas, you can end up having it for free through a rebate program. Get a hold of Trent or Justin at Forest Park FX. We have a link for them too. Uh, perhaps you're not happy with the spreads, a little shaky about the security of keeping more than, you know, a few thousand dollars at your broker, which limits hey, your... Yes, Steve, hi. Good morning. We have Justin tomorrow as well, right, if I remember. Uh, yeah, Justin's going to be with us tomorrow, correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I think that Justin is, is going to be, you know, the man to actually explain everything in detail. Okay. I won't waste any more time then. I'm looking for no, a recovery. Uh, no, it's all right. I don't mean that. I don't mean that, but uh, I mean that you know everybody that. You okay, know, everyone show show up today. Yeah. That's at investing.com. Uh, that's here today. Show up tomorrow because uh, we'll have one of the principals of Forest Park FX here. And what I like about them is they don't just represent one broker, so um, they know the brokers on this this side of the pond and what's happening in I'm not on mute I'm not muted maybe you need to log in and out again ashish so they're a broker of brokers like sometimes uh, managers uh, manage other managers so let's get to the markets uh, just a little bit uh, features to me of course, we finally cleaned out the low in the euro, cleaned out this low. There is some divergence, you know. I can't be in a hurry to 
to buy this thing. Uh, there are fibs lower. I know a lot of people are talking like 14 and a half. I have 14.54 is halfway back of the whole move that we had last year. But I think it's really getting late to be shorting it. As you could see on the four hour, we're not confirming here. We may not have even made a new low yet. The low here was uh, 51.02. Tell them I'm doing some now. Yeah, we still haven't taken the low out. And that's with successive new highs in the Dixie, right? And the Dixie is not confirming up here. Maybe this, I'm counting this as a drive two up here. One, two and thinking that what we have happening in two now is one, two, three. So between here and 96, I'm expecting a peak and then another pullback, maybe like this. The long shot uh, call for a formation, when you look at the weekly, even though we've taken out this uh, neckline here a little bit, would be the dollar to really have a more severe correction uh, back down to 92. It could put in a right shoulder down there. And down here, you'll probably have excessive Euro bullishness, just like you're starting to get some excessive bearishness here. So uh, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, we could just continue, but I'm thinking with what I'm seeing on some short-term RSI readings that it's starting to get heavy. Uh, I believe Greg has a 9620 target up here. Uh, some other guys I've talked to 9580, so we're close. Uh, close to something counter trend. And I just want to bring it up, it doesn't always work, but uh, GAN used to really pay attention to the change of seasons. Uh, markets going up into a change of season could also mean a change of direction. It doesn't happen, have to happen right on the day. You know, it could be a couple days either side. A lot of these cycles are like that. So uh, I think uh, the next trade, instead of trying to get the last piece to the upside here in the dollar for this move, would be to look for short entries. So that's my bias. Uh, actually, and some pretty strange action um, in the indexes last night. I mean, last night I was up till about 8 o'clock. And I was watching the S&Ps, they were up here. I don't know what happened last night. Plus, you got that big pop uh, in the yen and the Nikkei. And, you know, since I'm bearish, uh, the yen and uh, that bearishness is being tested here. You know, we start closing back over the 70 area. Uh, looks like we could make a move for here. Attempting it, though. Um, Maybe the yields come off, but pretty lousy action from where we were last night. Also, I wanted to point this out. So when Blake and I were talking early in the week, he showed the weekly NASDAQ 100 and said, yeah, uh, this is a third drive we were here. Okay, so yeah, we had the weekly divergence. We really don't have much daily, but I'd say we do now. Still a uh, pretty high reading up around 70, but you could tell just by a shade, it's under today's reading. Four hours, pretty glaring, right? Here's your confirmed high, here's drive two, and here's three, way under 70. So even if we made another move, um, up towards 73.50, which was a number I was talking about. I don't think the four hour would confirm. And the one hour did confirm, which I like them not to. So I think this time, if we just make a marginal new high, the one hour will line up with the rest of them. So um, pay attention to the NASDAQ over 73 and a half. Uh, I think we could be setting up something significant. Here's one, here's two. And here's three, and here's a fractal, okay? So here's one, two, and three, which is a fractal of this. Everyone see that? 
You like that? You got a change in the MPZ official bank rate votes. I think the pound is really due for a relief rally. And isn't that what we're getting here? That's a pretty nice candle. Why can't we rally back to 35? I mean, that would be a, a marginal retrace from up here. Call it 44, call it 13 handles. So five handles back would be about 38%. There you go. 35, 40, that could happen. And Dean on the treasuries are a little more iffy and then I'm gonna turn it over to Blake so he has some time to talk. I'm not sure if there's any data. I, my Wall Street Journal, <laughs> my dog has not brought up my Wall Street Journal to the door yet. I wish I had a dog that could do that for me. Let's see. So I think that's, Dina wanted to know about yields. Okay. You know, I'm kind of torn here, Neil. Uh, uh, Dina, we we failed the 61.8, but it wasn't that deep of a pullback. Uh, if I'm wrong and the stock market keeps blowing, we could get another test of this up here. Uh, it's like 3% on the 10-year yield. And that would kind of be like a one, two, three up here. But I don't think we're going to take out the highs and yields. And I still believe we're going to take out this low. So, but, you know, uh, you may have to sit through something like this. Okay. I prefer it just broke from here. And the daily looks like a descending triangle. Or I was looking for something like this from here that could take it way down. But, you know, how many trades give you when you're a position trader and you're looking for a big move? It's rare when you do it that day and then the big move ensues. You know, as a position trader, you have to, you know, live through drawdowns and you rarely get immediate gratification on position trades, at least. That's been my experience. If you're that great, uh, my hat's off to you. But normally I'm early and that's why I piece in instead of going all in and all out. But I, I still think this is a high. And I'm predicating a lot of this on that we get a break in, you know, the S&Ps, you know, the, the daily starting to look a little negative. Uh, I think it's going to take a risk off event, at least to take maybe the S&Ps take 100 handles off or so to get the bonds rolling again. That help? I hope I haven't stolen any of Steve's questions. So you guys come up with some more questions here. I really encourage you I really encourage you to subscribe to our service. Uh, uh, really, this free room that you have, uh, our sponsor at Forest Park FX, they're the reason. So uh, call them for some advice on your broker. There's no law against having several accounts. I mean, I know a lot of people that have more than one FX account. How about you guys? Any of you out there have more than one FX account? Give me a why if you do in the question box. Kareem does. Okay, see, most people do. All right, Blake, how you doing, buddy? Great, how you doing? I, I rambled, huh? I was rambling. What's that? I was rambling. Yeah, <laughs> Bab babbling. Yeah, you, you you were babbling a little bit, and happy Thursday to you. Um, yeah, and, uh, happy solstice, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Look at you. Uh, that it, 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 as Delio said, it comes around so so uh, quickly. Yeah. Well, the sun's not up here yet, but um, let's have a great summer uh, in the markets with everybody and our business, and you know, let's kick butt. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so, uh, so how's how's it uh, how's it going over there? Um, you, you know, as as I explained to you uh, um, 
uh, earlier. I'm I'm going to see one of your hometown uh, hometown bands tonight. I'm going to go out and actually uh, make make myself um, a, a public uh, appearance spectacle out of the out of the and maybe a spectacle too out of out of the house, um, which I don't. Uh -huh do during the week so that sounds it's, uh, like fun it, man reggae yeah. is it outdoors or indoors it's adds outdoors uh, it is a they're 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 um they have a very much of a reggae type of uh, wow. vibe mm. but man it's going to be hot outside hot 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 anyway um well, uh, let's make see. some money to pay for your concert tickets how uh, do we do it here uh, well, it's it's, it's going to be a little tough. I mean, first of all, there's there's a few things that are a few obstacles that are in our way. Um, for, first and foremost is obviously the the trade war or lack of information on the trade. Oh, we can call it dispute. Yeah. You can call it whatever you want, but the the lack of information out there uh, on on what the the uh, current administration is going to do ahead of the tariffs being implemented on July 8th. That's like um, you know is. Uh, you know, I was talking with the, the guys and gals in our office, or the gals, there's no gals in the office uh, in Greenwich, uh, sorry, uh, the guys in our office, is that, um, that uh, you know, as, as tar these tariffs implementation looms uh, going into July, the, the, the less information we hear about um, any negotiations or, 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 or give up, um, the 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 more the risk is for a turn lower in risk appetite as we approach that deadline. So, you know, basically the markets markets approaching everything right now with the assumption is we're going to work something out, um, you know, with, with our trade partners, whether it's China or the European union or Canada, but, you know, as we get close to this date, you know, I think it's July a little bit more nervous. Is, July 6th, I, be, I believe uh, tariffs will uh, go well, into yeah, effect. Right, but but really you have over the weekend, right? So oh, you're yeah. talking about the 8th being Sunday. Uh, All right. So, yeah, but you're talking that, that end of that week, the, right. the 6th through 8th, okay, we can call it. Um, you know, the, markets needs to, the market needs to hear some really some concessions over the next couple of weeks. And if we don't get it, then, you know, the market might – start to price because i because uh, we we believe and and i agree with this this is i say we is from the office that i trade from um we believe that it's not priced in to the market the market is very yeah. much um nonchalant about everything that's happening and 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 like i said that, that coming with the attitude that um you know there's going to be some concessions made and you know we're going to avoid a lot yeah. of these tariffs and back and forth but um you know i was just reading a note from goldman sachs that i put in our chat room this morning about you know they they expect uh things to accelerate not decelerate accelerate yeah. so you know the market hasn't really priced in a lot of those risks what so but i agree right, but but i mean okay. a 13 vix of course uh they're that's pretty complacent it is. Um, now, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that 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 you know today you start just shorting stocks. I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. We are dealing with the World Cup. We've got a lot of great matches um, I, that that are that are happening today. Uh, that is, it, and and I mentioned this yesterday. And yesterday was literally like trying to trade during New Year's Eve. That, that's how bad yesterday's trading was. It was, you know, 10 pip ranges. I, it was it was horrible. And I expect a lot of the same today. You, if you read the analysis, and I actually had to send out an alert uh, with Forex Analytics. It, you get these, like, bell notifications here. Um, or or uh, we get bell notifications. We have bell notifications that alert people of if we're having any issues with our platform. I actually sent out an alert that went out into the updates or alert history here. Uh, overnight analysis con contains a lot of no change in analysis. This is due to summer trading in the the, the World Cup. I mean, World Cup. If, for those of you that don't know, if you haven't traded through a World Cup before, um, it, it's it's paralyzing to the market because you have every. I'm not watching CNBC right now. I'm watching the Denmark Australia game right now. Nice goal, nice goal by Ericsson, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. It really was, actually. I, I, I actually looked away from the TV to do something, and I looked back, and I'm like, whoa, what happened? Um, yeah. And by the way, Blake, down. Sp speaking huh? of the World Cup, in less than six hours, we have the um, 
uh, Argentina versus Croatia game, that's going to draw a lot of attention. So I'm really not expecting anything to happen. You know, late in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah. be nothing. And you know, the problem with the, like the currency. When's market, it over? Uh, uh, Steve. The world, the world cup. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Had, like two weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, it needs like a, a couple of weeks more. Usually, uh, it lasts a little bit, uh, a little bit less uh, than a month. Uh, usually, but I, I need oh to remind you here that, but that you know, after we go through the first phase, the group phase, we yeah. it's not that we have like three, four, uh, three, four games each day. So you know, the, the games are going to start um, spreading out afterwards. So it's the impact is going to be much less limited on an intraday basis. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, the the price action is horrible, and and if you look at if you look at the tight ranges that we've seen just over the last you know 24 hours, I mean, you got some of these currency pairs like you you take the Aussie, and the Aussie is actually one of the bigger movers right now, but but it's still you know you're talking for less than 40, less than 50 pip trading ranges. Yeah, um, even Canada, which was on fire, is is like yeah, it's it's completely. EKG of a dead guy now. It's 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 grinding to a halt. Now that doesn't mean that we won't get volatility. Obviously, you know, people like myself and and, and we're we're waiting around for just some sort of headline to provoke uh, a, a movement. And so what I'm doing, what I have been doing, and what I did last night, for example, is I shorted the U.S. dollar Japanese yen at uh, at 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 61. I put my stops above, uh, or I, yeah, I shorted at 61 last night. I put my stops above 111. We got, we were down at 35. I didn't cover uh, when I got up this morning. Uh, it got back up to like 49, and I covered. And I took, I took, you know, 10, 12 pips off the table, whatever it was. And I, I mean, I just shorted the U.S. dollar Japanese yen moments ago at 59, and I'm, it's at 53 right now, and I'm probably going to take just closed out my position. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, adapt, take what the uh, what market conditions give you. Well, well, you know, that's the thing. You, you've got to you've got to be able to take just little bits and pieces. I mean, if you look at my P and L from uh, last week going into this week, yeah. uh, it it, it I, I mean, I'm I'm not exaggerating, I, and and fortunately, I've been positive for the last like five trading days straight. But my P and L has dropped to one eighth the size it was last week. So last week I was, let's say I was making, I'm just using this as an example. If I was making $10,000 last week per day, I'm down to making like, you know, 1500 today. I mean, that's that's basically the ratio that we're looking at as far as my P&L goes. Oh, and, man, and baby, baby needs shoes. But I'm just saying that, that, <laughs> that you have very little opportunity, so you got to be able to take little, little um you know pieces off when you can when you find them because if you're expecting some sort of blowout move right now unless we get some sort of um uh you know um yeah uh, they can happen yeah they they can some sort of so, a news then, event and yeah. and frankly I, I missed the cable i wasn't i i i i'm not i missed the cable because i didn't want to play it while it was what was below 132. you know it, we have been in a downtrend uh, we we've been looking for the the pound to continue to break down even overnight before we have this pop up to 132. You know we were expecting a move down to the 127 percent extension to 131, uh, 13130. If you you know read the analysis from last night, um, if you read the analysis from last night, uh, it you know the pound dollar closed below the 132 level, which should keep the bearish trend intact and move to the 131.30 level looks likely. That was last night's analysis. Yeah, I mean, we got down to 131 and change, and then we popped back up again. And if you weren't, you know, you had to have been trading counter trend to to take advantage of that. Hey, Dale, do you guys, um, can 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 you guys um, hold down the fort really quick? I gotta flip it over to you. Yeah. You've, you've, lo you've look, looked in somewhere at Chihuahua or something there. Yeah, I've <laughs> got, I've got, my dogs are going crazy and it's, it's, yeah. it's really, it's five less, it's, it's 524 in the morning here. So I need to go. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. With them. I don't know what they're, I'm gonna flip it over to I'll you, get, Steve. Sorry I'll about that. I'll give Steve a hard time. Yeah. Absolutely. How are you, Stevie? I would have been better if uh, Blake stayed a little bit longer because Denmark seems to be uh, pushing for another goal. <laughs> I, I think that's supporting gold because it's about to put in a nice candle. And you know I'm not always friendly gold, 
but uh, I kind of, we went to the 78.6 level, Steve, on the daily from that home move. In yes, fact, if yeah. 78.6 sticks out, I mean, you know, we've had a $100 move in two months. Why can't we you, rally 20 bucks? You're, you're absolutely absolutely right. But, you know, since Blake didn't manage to finish what he was saying about the cable, and since, yeah. uh, you know, the cable is, uh, you yeah, know. The, grab, grab the screen because you know about my commodity, you know what. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you everything about gold <laughs> just just after that. But uh, having right. to do with the cable for those that uh, didn't see, uh, we had a six to three vote. Uh, so uh, three oh. descendants voted for a hike uh, in the BOE. One of them being uh, the chief economist. So you know that points to the probability of uh, you know uh, the BOE tightening monetary policy sooner than the market was expecting. And if you remember, Dale, yesterday I spoke about uh, the cable specifically, saying that you know people should not be trying to short the cable simply because um, you know to me it looks like the next move is going to be higher. Now, if if it would happen from here or a little bit lower, it's a different question. Uh, but but you know I mentioned that we we are currently on a confluence of supports, uh, which is the 50% fib from the uh, post Brexit low to the recent high that we had at 140, almost 144, let's call it. And it's also, if you see this uh, blue channel here, I was monitoring this ascending channel for, for quite some time. It it acted uh, multiple times as, uh, you know, re resistance support. And even after we broke above it, it, start, it started acting um, as support again. And, you know, the, the, the extension of, of that trend line support came in exactly at this area um and you know we we're seeing the cable today if i zoom in here so far posting an outside white candle and if we actually do close below roughly where we currently are like 132.20 uh we're also going to have an evening star formation here sorry a morning star formation here which is which is um a, a bullish uh reversal candlestick formation okay so Some i would good be confluence down there steve yeah, 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 very nice confluence here. I mentioned it yesterday on the webinar as well, Blake, and I said that if we don't find support here, I would also be looking for the psychological level of 130, which has also acted multiple times as support in the past. But regardless, you know, I warned people that, in my opinion, uh, you know, the cable is approaching levels that we should probably be looking to buy it for a, like for a stronger bounce uh, than actually trying to sell it. Because, you know, if you sold like cable at 131, 131.50, where would you place your stop, right? And of course, I'm not talking about scalping setups. I'm talking like on the daily chart. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we're seeing a very nice reaction uh, so far today. And obviously, the 133 area is going to be a very strong area of resistance. We will have to clear that to actually get confirmation that, you know, we're getting some kind of a bigger rebound. But if that happens, I would actually be looking for 136 to be tested in this occasion, because as you uh very well mentioned blake the previous uh bounce for the cable was extremely extremely shallow um so uh let's uh, and you know let's I, I, would, I would say we'd have to get we, we have to get well above like the 30 the 132 50 level to 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 for me to be convinced and 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 frankly i mean you're trading counter trend not not so much uh, well you can say counter trend yeah. to the to the pound but you you know counter trend of the dollar which the dollar has been relentlessly strong so it's it's a it's a Absolutely. tough trade it is it is it is but you know how it is i mean uh, at some point uh you know nothing moves in a straight line right and you know uh, the, the, there will be uh, an occasion there will be a region right? and some some sometimes news start piling up suddenly um in in the hey, Steve, opposite direction with the, yeah mate i'm sorry philly fed and uh um jobless claims are coming out here momentarily uh, i'll okay. tell you as they come out i uh, yeah they're, they're coming out just in uh about 15 seconds so we have uh we have philly fed um okay so initial jobless claims came in in line continuing claims a little higher than expected and Philly Fed still not out. Um, Canada wholesale trade uh, sales 0 0.1 versus 0 0.3 expected. So that's an, an underwhelming print as well. 
Uh, still waiting on Philly Fed. Uh, ooh, that's a miss. Uh, Nineteen point nine versus twenty nine expected. So that's a little weaker Whoa. than expected as yeah. far as Philly so Fed that's, goes. That's quite a strong miss, actually. Yes, indeed. Um, let's actually have a look at the DXY since you mentioned no, it before. No reaction. I mean, the dollar index is. I mean, I, I look at the dollar yen. It's just sitting there. It's not doing anything. Hey, you know, one one um one other chart real, really quick before I, I let you take over. Um, you know, you, you guys got to watch the Aussie dollar. Uh, the Aussie dollar is it it held uh, basically 73.40, 73.45 overnight. Um, that that could it, it go like a an hourly chart. You got a little Absolutely. wedge. Little little wedge there. There you go, little wedge, and and if it oh, breaks yeah. up above like the 80 level, you might get a, a double bottom. Um, may, maybe take us back up above 74. Like literally, I have nothing else to look at today, and I'm looking at things like this. So that's yeah, that's, and we, that's we, we also see some very very clear. Since you mentioned the one hour chart, there is also some very clear RSI divergence. I mean, we started diverging actually uh, several days ago, if you see. Yeah. The 15th of the month. Uh, we we are still diverging, so yeah, that 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 might be a good indication. There is some obvious uh, momentum loss having to do with the bearish momentum. So yeah, absolutely, why not see a bounce, a bounce from here? To be honest, if I go back to the daily chart, uh, we almost uh, you know made it to my next target. I had said since we were testing the this um, bear flag support, I had said that if we actually manage to break that on the 75 cents level, the next target would be the 127 point. Uh, 0.2 percent extension of uh, the last move higher, which comes at 73.26. So we almost made it there, and who knows? We might actually see another push to the downside, and we might make it there. In which case, you know, indeed, it's going to be uh, probably time to see some kind of a, a reaction higher, e even if that ends up being like uh, simply corrective. Well, and you know, remember the Aussie is purely, purely a a a, uh, a a move based on you know trade right now, and the reason why it's gotten just pummeled is is the the high tensions uh, between the China. U.S. and China, yeah. and and so you know any bounce right now, it, it, like let's say we get an intraday bounce and it starts it gets above like 73.80. You can't expect a lot out of it. If it gets back above 74 cents, like 74.10, you know you gotta you got to be looking to sell it again because you know bounces should be fairly limited unless there's some sort of news that 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 China is making some concessions and um, but but if if the hard line on trade continues then the Aussie the 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 natural path of this pair is lower but you got to look to sell rallies versus trying to short it down here after having such an aggressive move over the last few weeks is there's no for sense sure, in trying sure. to Lower, so. And people shouldn't also people shouldn't also get out of their mind the long term picture, which is that actually the Aussie broke below uh, a very long term yeah. pattern. Uh, it came up, it retested it, it failed. So you know, any way you look at it, any way you slice it, I think that you know we have to remain bearish until proven otherwise, and not the opposite. Yeah, exactly. All right, Steve. Well, hey, good luck with the rest of uh, the pairs and the analysis, and um, and and Dale, have a great uh, interview today. Same with you, uh, Blake. See you later, mate. Thanks, Steve. Okay. So, um, okay, we already covered uh, Aussie with uh, the help of uh, Blake. Uh, let me go back to the pound pairs that I was talking about. Um, the second pair I wanted to show here is obviously the pound yen quite a popular one. Now, I'm not really sure what's happening here with the pound yen. I'm sure that I, you know, I remain bearish as long as we trade below this uh, broken formation. We came up, we retested it. Now, is this going to form some kind of a triangle and eventually break lower? That's one probability. Is it going to come up uh, post, you know, a higher high from this one, like form some kind of an ABC retest? this broken trend line a little bit higher and then resume lower. That's another probability, right? Um, regardless, uh, I think that the pair remains, uh, you know, in uh, sell the rally mode, whatever kind of rally we uh, we managed to get here. So nothing really has changed with that. Now, let's go to the other pound crosses. One of them being the pound Aussie. I had specifically marked here. Um, I had shown uh, on the webinar that this bottom was also an inverted head and shoulders formation 
let me go down to a four hour chart. You can see it more clearly. Here it is. Let me mark it. You see, this was an inverted head and shoulders formation. We broke above it. So let me go back to the daily so I can. And I said that, you know, once and if we actually do that, uh, you know, a, a level to be looking for at a rebound is actually this horizontal support resistance area uh, that comes roughly at 179.50. This is also the 50% FIB of the move lower that we had, right? So, uh, you know, the easy move of the rebound has already happened, in my opinion. You should be quite careful from here because, you know, the chances of uh, some kind of a rejection from here, worst case scenario, I'm going to extend this uh, range from there is uh, quite likely to see at least one more leg lower for the pound Aussie. So, you know, pound Aussie, a very nice rebound. RSI also worked out the uh, overbought conditions, but I, I, I would become quite more cautious here. Pound Kiwi, same situation. Uh, I mean, having to do with that, we saw a nice rebound from uh, a quite significant area of support. Uh, in any case, as long as we trade below 194.50, I think that, you know, seeing one more leg to the downside from somewhere there is a decent probability, right? So keep that in mind. In, in bottom line, I wouldn't be actually buying those pairs right here, right now. Pound CAD. You know, quite a significant move lower. I think that, you know, there is at least one more leg to the downside here as well. Now, where would that come from? Uh, perhaps from somewhere there. Okay. So, so far, so good. I mean, the rebound uh, is is ongoing. Um, we, we had some early indication with, if you see here on the daily, we had some uh, clear RSI divergence. There it is. This one is playing out. Uh, but I would expect that eventually that's going to fail and we're going to see at least one more leg to the downside right so far it remains strong though so and one more thing i want to add here um obviously uh both the pound and the canadian dollar have been rather weak uh you know lately <laughs> so in any case i don't think that you should be looking to be buying or selling crosses of week to week or strong to strong currencies it's it's a better idea you know if you have if you want to have more conviction and you know a higher probability that your trade is going to work out it, it's it's uh, rather smart if you find um you know a strong currency and you know uh buy it against a, a weak currency as i said both of them have been rather weak lately so i don't think it's it's the ideal cross trade to be looking to uh trade at the moment by the way, I just got a notification. Australia scored back, so Denmark, Australia won one. Um, so let's go. Um, now that we covered the pound crosses, let's um, let's have a look at uh, a brief look at what's happening with risk. Um, so far uh, today and overnight, you know, we saw, we saw an initial move higher, but you know, this has already failed, having to do with uh, the S and P. Um, we have to uh, we have to note though. First of all, that the Nasdaq posted um, uh, even intraday, you know, after hours, a new all-time high uh, after yesterday's uh, all-time high uh, closing level. So, you know, Nasdaq remains quite strong. I remind you that one probability that we were looking for, and that's why we were looking for higher levels, is that this might be some kind of an ascending wedge. And, you know, you need to notice here that we, we've started seeing some signs of RSI divergence. There it is. You can see that the price is actually uh, posting new highs, but the RSI for the time being is diverging at overbought levels. So uh, obviously the upside momentum seems to more or less be stalling, which means that, uh, and, and we are also approaching like the 127.2, which means that I would be quite cautious. I would definitely not be buying here, but the index that has definitely, definitely overperformed. And if you remember, I was talking about that probability, you know, some time ago, is the IWM, the Russell, and you know it's now almost at uh, the confluence of resistances that I had set as a target, which is uh, the 100 and almost close to 172. Yeah, nice yeah, which is, yeah, which is the 161.8 extension of the last move lower, um, and also this 
uh, this channel wow. is resistance. You can see. Yeah, you so, got it. Uh, I, You're going to short it up there, aren't you? Uh, you know something, Dale? Uh, I might actually do so because you know what know, else, Steve? You know the after, Russell, the Russell likes the dollar rally too. Oh yeah. All right. So if we're near a correction point in the dollar, uh, there's a you know kind of a background um, thing that could work in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. And you know something. One of the reason, uh, one of the reasons actually that we are seeing, uh, if we want to take it on a macro basis, one of the reasons that we're seeing the Russell during the past uh, several days overperform the rest of the indices is the fact that the market, in my opinion, mistakenly believes, and I, I have to stress out here, mistakenly believes, that even um, uh, even if um, you know we, we, we get a full right. tra trade war between China and right, because it's all domestic here, and it will exactly. be, yeah, right. Exactly. I know what you mean. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, they're under the assumption that since the companies here are domestic, I mean, traded in the index are domestic, they shouldn't be harmed, and perhaps, perhaps they will even benefit um, from such a trade war. In my opinion, that is a very short-sighted approach. Um, I mean, they, they they might initially, due to expectations, do so. That's why I, I was I was actually um, advising against trying to fade this move. But I have to tell you that sooner or later the market is going to realize that the domestic economy and and hence the domestic companies are also going to be hurt by that, and probably even more than uh, the companies trade in, in the rest of the indices. So I, I do believe that you know even from a macro viewpoint. Um, this uh, this rally's momentum is uh, based on false assumptions, and I need to stress that out. And yes, I think that the confluence up there at 171.83 is probably going to give a very nice opportunity uh, to, to to fade this um, move higher. Now, uh, last now, night, uh, the NASDAQ went within, uh, I think, 15 or 20 points. I had a 73.50 number, and it did make a new high and uh, did not confirm on uh, quite a few time frames. And within the NASDAQ, uh, uh, semiconductors used to be the big leader in there, Steve, and they're not even close to new highs. So uh, yep. there is even deterioration in the strength. Absolutely, and keep in mind that if we want to talk about like divergences, the Dow is by far well, the weakest one, right? Because we have to... Yeah. yeah, just look at it. I mean, nothing in comparison to what we're seeing in the Nasdaq, nothing in comparison to definitely what we're seeing in the Russell. You know how they could and, rally this? They could put Amazon and Google and Facebook <laughs> in the Dow. <laughs> uh, by, by the yeah, way, that um, would pump it a little bit, don't you think? By the way, uh, Blake, <laughs> just sent, Blake just sent me a message saying that he's going to uh, come back in two, three minutes because he has something important to say from what I understand. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll be, be I'll be back in <laughs> five. Uh, I'll be back. So I, 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 so I'm and, guessing and that we do uh, have our inter have a great interview today with Sareed Harper. Uh, his handles. What is he Sareed going to talk about? At Pipnotic, uh, uh, he, he has his own twist on supply demand work. You know, work that on the online trading academy sells for twenty thousand dollars to teach, but uh, a lot of people use. You know, you could call it pivots, supply demand, support resistance, but I'm interested in seeing his wrinkles on it. So I'll be back in a few minutes and uh, uh, thanks, Steve. Okay, absolutely. For, so for I covering, have more things to talk about. For absolutely. Every, including I that lazy Stelios is probably still on an island. He He's on an island. I fire us. him today. Yeah, sending us uh, pictures with uh, yeah. nice cold coffee. Look at me. Yeah. Look at where I'm at, and you're working. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. I know the attitude. All right, buddy. <laughs> okay, mate. Um, by the way, I, I have to say that uh, that ducks really, uh, really produced a, like a huge uh, head fake here. I mean, it, it it is about to break below this bottom, which actually will transform this. With double top, right? You can see it here. 
So if we actually break today, if we actually close below this uh, range of support, then that's going to be pointing quite lower. So I have, I have to point out, uh, you know, what we're seeing in the DAX. Uh, Blake, you're again with hey, us. I can hey, hear, right? Yeah. Hey, Steve. Hey, I wanted Welcome. to. Um, hey, uh, thanks. I, I forgot one one last thing. We had one of our traders last night. I can't remember exactly who asked me. Uh, wanted to ask the difference between uh, the the COT report and the daily sentiment index. Uh, uh, daily sentiment index is is something that we as a company, I say, as Forex Analytics, we subscribe to, which is not. It's much different than the COT. Um, the COT is the commitment of traders, or basically the size that um, you know, uh, commercial, non-commercial. Oh man, I'll, I'll tell you what, the dollar is getting smashed right now. We're seeing a pretty good move in the dollar. Ooh, um, it, it's it, yeah. It, the cable uh, at the at the high of the day, uh, from what I see, euro as well. Aussie as well. I mean, we're, we're seeing, and most importantly, because I was looking at that before, Blake, just yeah. look at the daily, the daily candle in, in the dollar so far. Yeah. I it's mean, a, it, it, it's on its way for a key reversal here. Right, right. Um, uh, and, and, and oh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to mention it really quick as far as daily sentiment versus COT. Daily sentiment is actually a survey amongst brokers, brokers and banks. Um, it's 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 a sentiment index. It's not positioning. Uh, the 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 COT that's um, you know um, uh, given out by the by the Treasury. It's it's a few days in the rears. Um, it comes out on Fridays and it's as of Wednesday's data. Tuesday. So you, you, Tuesday yeah, close. You, I think. It Tuesday yeah. close. Yeah, Tuesday close. Excuse me. And um, and the daily sentiment index is is basically. Um, uh, it's it is it is a, a a survey, and it's been and it's the 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 daily sentiment index has been used by futures traders for for years and years and years, and it's something that you know especially like pre-internet days, um, this daily sentiment was the was the 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 benchmark, and you know if things got too too uh, um, Exaggerated one direction or the other, then then you know sentiment is very strong. But the the it is it's something that we use as a complement to um, other indicators that we have, and it's just something that we we I I tend to take a look at if things are extremes, like the Australia uh, dollar extremes have been extreme extremely bearish sentiment for the last two days. So I was kind of looking for an uptick in the Aussie. Um, you know, the last couple of days, and we're, we seem to be getting it right now. So, and, and same with the and Canadian since, dollar. Since you mentioned it, they have one thing in common, the DSI and the COTs, that extreme readings are always contrarian indicators. Yes, 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 yeah. They, and and they, they, they are. So if, if, they, if they're too extreme in one direction or the other, then that usually is telling us that we might need to start looking the other direction. Anyway, I just want to bring that up because um, um, uh, it's, it's some, it was a question that was asked yesterday in the uh, in the um, in the chat. Absolutely, thank you, Blake. All right, thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, Blake. Blake. Good, good hunting, man. Same to you. Just look at this daily candle. Um, yeah, Dale. Yeah. You know what my uh, what I'd really love to see, Steve, is a break all the way back down towards 92, one and a half, and this be a weekly neckline, even though we got through it at 95, and then the next big rally. So, you know, maybe a month or so of uh, dollar weakness or consolidation to take out the 93 level and hold above, you know, hold above 91. And if you look to the left on your chart, uh, that's the left shoulder and we get some type of right shoulder here and then it measures pretty good i mean it measures 102 it measures almost have, back to the highs i have to tell you that if i've learned one thing about the markets is that is absolutely absolutely nothing is impossible but i have yeah. to tell you that i would be extremely skeptical for a move all the way up there extremely skeptical i think everyone is but yeah. you know there's a, some good guys that you know are saying that if you go back to the go the monthly um, like Giuseppe Bazil, uh, 
or or the yeah the monthly would probably be better um that we're gonna okay yeah this is the month uh, all right I, I was thinking more about uh uh the euro shows a little clearer okay it's the same Let's thing the it's the same thing monthly it's almost the same thing uh yeah it's just it's inverse euro. Yeah, okay, Weekly. there. So he's looking, you see that big break we had in 2015 from 140 to this one. 103, yeah. yeah. And we rallied back to the breakdown. He's looking for something like that from 125. Hmm. Yeah, at okay. least lows. So, I mean, uh, he's not an Elliotician or anything, but I've seen Elliotician's uh, looking for the same count that are looking for parity. So something like this, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something uh, equivalent, or, or you know, you even look at the uh, length of this that big triangle. That's a great look. I mean, that looks like, like it goes from 115 to 160. That's 35. 35 from 125 is 90. Yeah, as you see, this is where I marked actually. That, yeah. Okay. So that's a bare case. Okay. Okay. Uh, personally, I would be buying both hands the euro, uh, you know, at much higher levels than that, unless, of course, unless we, uh, you know, something big is happening that is threatening uh, you, the eurozone itself. You understand what I mean? So, uh, what, what other... does Rekha say uh, would confirm a bearish count for him? Uh, we were talking about it last week because you were, you know, you wanted to know when his count, I think we had to get to a wave four, maybe it was 14 and a half, and then he'd sell the next rally. Uh, yeah. What you said. Is that, in my memory right? Perhaps a little bit lower, if I remember. He might have been looking for a little bit lower than 114.50, but like anywhere between 113 and 114.50, yeah. I think that's, that's more or less where we're... So that would confirm confirmed. to him that's like wave one down. Or that's Some, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah but that, well, let's okay, first get, anyway. get there. Because as you see, speaking of which, we're currently on the weekly. You can yeah. see where where we're stalling so far on the weekly, right? Right. You see how right. important this 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 area of support is. So yeah, maybe it uh, puts in a right shoulder up at 120. Yeah, it can be. So you mean something like I'm living in the future today. Some something like this here. Yeah. And then you can have like a head and shoulders formation here, yeah. breaking down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to 114.50 after doing that, and okay. you know, and, and then I, I'll tell you that then everybody's going to be watching for head and shoulders formation, and and you know what happens when everybody's watching for a head and shoulders formation, right? Yeah. <laughs> the head explodes. No, the shoulder <laughs> separates. <laughs> the shoulder <laughs> separation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, so anyhow, um, look look at the candle so far in, in gold. Just look at the retracement we're getting there. I mean, I, I told you that I want to cover gold as well because, you know, for me, it was quite important that gold was approaching, uh, you know, the top area of the level of support I have here. And, you know, we, we're not far away from this uh, channel's uh, support. And look at the candle so far. I mean, uh, you know, we're paring back the losses. If we do close positive on the day, that's going to be quite a big uh, sign here. Let's have a look at silver as well. There it is. Silver already posting a hammer right on support area as well. So that's another. And mm, I have I have a gut feeling here that platinum. Yeah, platinum is also trying to hold this confluence of supports we were talking about. Yes, just look at the th last three daily candles. All of them have been uh, posting lower weeks, right? Uh, at this level. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, let me not forget, um, we released yesterday I'll, our latest blog post. There it is. On crude. So if you go to Forex Analytics and you, you click on the blog, it's, it's free for all to read. Uh, this is our latest uh, blog post on crude. There it is. Right. We approach the crude market from multiple viewpoints. I strongly suggest that you read about it. So I'm not going to cover crude today because, you know, yesterday's post is obviously still 100 uh, percent on point. I mean, nothing has changed yet uh, in uh, our viewpoint. 
So uh, let me go back to what I was saying about the DAX. The DAX is in danger of actually closing below this uh, 12,600 area. If that happens, then we're, we're talking about a range and the double top here, which is going to point quite lower. And let's have a look at the FTSE as well. And I need to remind you here that when I had sorted actually the FTSE, I said very clearly that, you know, this looked to me You see, like a pennant. So at least one more leg down was missing. That's what I said. Uh, and, you know, we've already like fulfilled this and we're already testing the first area of support. If we actually break below here and obviously if we see some uh, further um, uh, pound strength coming through the market, that's definitely going to help the foods deflate somewhat. Uh, the next area of support I would be looking for is the confluence of this uh, horizontal support resistance area and the 200 dma as you see it's the blue line in this area that's actually the 200 daily moving average but uh, to begin with we need to break below here because this is another confluence of supports it's actually another support resistance area and the 50 dma is actually here the 50 daily uh, simple daily moving average okay so if this level holds fine if it doesn't i will be looking for a move towards the 7400 and uh, 30 area of support. Um, so I, I do think that, you know, the FTSE was, you know, cleaner. Uh, I, I said that since the beginning and it actually did play out to be uh, like this. And I do think that the chances that it's going to break from here and make it to the next area of support are decently high. So keep that in mind. Now, how we do with the, uh, with the Nikkei, Nikkei is still oscillating be between a strong level of resistance, which is the 23,000 um area and a strong level of support which is the 22,000 area i do believe that no matter which uh, of these areas break are going to definitely extend when we were actually retesting the 23,000 area i said that we reject from here and go back back to 22,000 uh, but if we do break higher we should at least test the uh, highs uh, quite soon we we got the uh, scenario that we, we saw a rejection um, if we do break below 22,000, I would be looking for an extension lower that should be at least 1,000 points as long as, um, as, as uh, uh, wide as this range has been. So I would be looking for at least a move towards uh, 21,000, if not lower from there. Obviously, if that ends up being the case in, uh, for the Nikkei, we should also see, which is what we're expecting, a continuation lower for the USD yen um, to at least come down and retest the 108 area. Let me briefly have a look of uh, if we have any questions because we had quite a lot to talk about. I know that we don't have much time, but let me see if there is something I haven't covered. Uh... Steve, what is the exact level on the IWM to short? I told you that the confluence of um, the confluence of resistances I have here is at one seventy-one point eighty-three. Right. You better answer Stalin's questions, or you're going to the gulag. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> I wouldn't ignore <laughs> Stalin, buddy. And you know what we were Skyping about. Sta he, Stalin, he was just Stalin. as bad as the H guy. So yeah, Stalin must, be must have been a very weird guy in real life, I mean. And, you know, our friend Stalin here is, is also asking weird questions because he wants to know about the, the Swiss yen, uh, which, as you know, you know, um, they they have some equivalent characteristics last time we had a look at it from what i see we were down there and i said that we might see another bounce towards this trend line we did see another bounce but we didn't make it to the trend line we actually made it to the previous high so that actually yeah. created a, a very nice double top over there uh there it is a very nice double top and uh, too bad actually we missed this because that was a nice opportunity then we bro broke down below this uh range 
And, you know, we extended a little bit. We came up. We retested this range. I think that as long as we remain up, uh, below 112.50, you know, you can easily be looking uh, for lower levels. So, you know, 112.50 uh, key uh, level for the trend. As long as we remain below it, I think you should be looking for, for further weakness. Uh, only if we break above it, uh, you know, you, you can be looking on the uh, long side of this market. Yeah, so it reminds me of this uh, Japanese businessman who went to Switzerland, since you're talking Swiss yen, to convert his yen into Swiss, and, you know, he brought a million yen, and the banker said, well, you know, uh, there's a lot of fluctuations and volatility in the FX market because he didn't get as much as he thought. Okay, he goes, well, lots of fluctuations and volatility. He came back with the million yen, got even less, and as the Japanese guy going, what's going on? What? He goes, well, you know, lots of volatility and market fluctuations. He came back one last time and was given even less and told the banker, don't tell me, I fluctuated again. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think we'll start the interview. You like that yeah, one? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> we by gotta have way, fun. Oh, go ahead. But yeah. by the way, I have to say that the, the day uh, so far is turning to be interesting, having to do with effects. We're seeing like big reversal candles. So uh, uh, obviously, we're going to be sending up, up uh, sending out updates uh, on on the Forex Analytics platform. And obviously, if you have access, you are on the chat room, and you can see that you know we're exchanging ideas there as well. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, you know I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the interview, Dale. Thank you, Steve. Nice reversal candle on the one hour in gold. So dollar topping, gold popping, uh, great uh, entree for Sarid Harper. Sarid, I see you. I'm going to make you the presenter, and you'll be able to take control of the screen. And looking forward to meeting you and hearing your voice. Welcome to FACE. How are you today, buddy? I I'm hear good. you. Good. How are things? Great. A uh, very nice meeting you. I'm glad I reached out on Twitter and invited you to our community to read. So, uh, looking forward to hearing your story and the way you look at markets. Uh, I'd like to start at how did it start for you? How did you end up in as a trader using? Um, uh, support, resistance, supply, demand. Uh, get back in your time machine and tell us about your journey. How did it start? Well, I've been <clears throat> uh, trading kind of is a secondary uh, thing from where it was initially. I've been working with uh, computer viruses and computer hacking and stuff like that, computer security since about yeah, 1999. And, uh, and so I, that was kind of... I'll just tell you that we're seeing a blank blue screen if you wanted to All show right. anything I'll, else. I'll bring a chart on so you've got something pretty okay. to look at. Yeah, there you, there you go. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice work. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I, I got into trading via security work because, I mean, I think 90% of our customers were banks. And so I spent the majority of my, uh, my time and I still spend a lot of my time today uh, doing security assessments. Uh, okay. for, for some of the, the biggest banks in the world and prim primarily kind of core business software. So um, hedging, uh, fix, uh, liquidity, distribution, stuff like that. And so I, I was able to look into this big black box uh, on the sell side, um, which I found to be really exciting. Uh, and I, I first was introduced to currency trading when I had to to trade a uh, commodities and FX trading platform for a uh, for one of the major market makers here in Europe, and um, and so I had to sit one of the traders who explained to me how you how you trade and what a limit order is and a stop order and stuff like this, and I had no idea. And I was kind of walking through the application, you know, looking at the looking at the application via a, a security a perspective, but I found myself paying more attention to <laughs> uh, the constantly changing numbers on the screen, and I thought it was absolutely fascinating. Best so thought, video wow, game in the universe, huh? Totally, absolutely. You know, dollars going up and down and yen and this yeah, and that. And I yeah. thought, wow, this is amazing. So I, I mean, pretty quickly thereafter started to apply my uh, my knowledge within uh, computer uh, science, which is what I studied, 
uh, to the um, to the currency trading markets, and so I started to to write software, and I started doing that back in about 2010, which is okay. when I opened the doors of Pipnotic. What a great handle, uh, because it, it sounds like you were it was hypnotic to you uh, exactly when you first looked at it. That, that's what I was uh, gathering. So hypnotic, a, a real good catchy handle. <laughs> yeah, it is. I thought people, so. are, people are hypnotized by the script. Absolutely. Indeed. Sometimes it's hard. Indeed. In fact, last night uh, it was still eight. It was eight o'clock, and I was still looking at it. You know, my day started at three thirty. I'm not saying I sat in my chair all day, but even in the evening, I'll come in and check out Asia. So it is, it's, uh, uh, I'm hypnotized. And at times I <laughs> have to give, <laughs> have to give my mouse to my wife to have her lock it up in the wall safe. So, well, go ahead, Adi. <laughs> so, all right, so you started uh, applying what you knew um, as a computer guy, mathematician, you know, everything's math. And uh, you gravitated towards um, supply demand zones. Did you have a mentor that steered you in that direction or a book or it was natural, self-taught? Well, you, you know what, it's, um, I was one of probably the, uh, the few fortunate people. Um, I mean, due to my work with the banks, I was introduced to some, to some institutional traders and a lot of these guys were talking about very specific things. They were talking about liquidity, which I did not understand initially. And they were talking about uh, the strength of, a, of an economy, the strength. I was like, what do you mean the strength of the economy? And they said, well, if the yen, if the key figures uh, out of Japan are good, this is good for the yen. Um, and I said, okay, so I, I kind of converted that to a uh, currency strength. And so I started to do a lot of uh, searching for um, for this term liquidity a lot and this this guy popped up he keep popping up um, and so I wrote to this uh, guy and I went to one of his workshops back in maybe 2012 Who's and, the, guy? Um, uh, the guy is Chris Laurie okay I've interviewed Chris yeah Chris All right. is, uh, yeah he's a champion he is he's a he's the real deal and so Chris and I became uh, uh, good friends and he took me under his wing and and showed me the uh, the ins and outs of the uh, liquidity distribution, which I had a, a lot of insight into due to my uh, work. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so I kind of spent a lot of time met up with Chris quite a few times and um, participated like his workshop in 2012, and that was really good. It was like a um, a pretty intensive uh, three four days, and, uh, and I learned a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I bet much. I bet part of it was concentrating on Aussie yen for risk. <laughs> it was the carry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was that was really good. So luckily, my attention was immediately taken away from indicators and brought to liquidity. And I took um, um, what Chris was telling me about, and I and I used that to kind of focus on uh, different things when I was looking at um, writing software. So I said, okay, liquidity. What is liquidity? Well, liquidity is is where the orders are. Exactly. A liquidity is, is how quickly something can be buy or sell at any given time. And I said, well, how can you see liquidity on a price chart? So I started to, to study um, uh, price charts quite extensively. As a matter of fact, I took them the, the jump of faith um, about three and a half years ago where I decided to quit my job so that I could study uh, more intensely. So I, I quit my job. <laughs> um, which I don't recommend doing. Um, it, uh, we almost lost our home, but we managed to fix it. But I must say that in that period of time where I was able to study the charts for 10 hours a day, I mean, I mean, unbelievable um, insights uh, came to me as a, as, as a result of looking at the charts for such a long time, for so many hours. And so I started to, uh, when, I, when I was doing this, looking at the charts, I was, of course, my purpose, my primary purpose was to write a software. And I'd start to see these, these uh, price imbalances, um, these liquidity voids. Um, and I, I thought to myself, well, how can I identify these uh, using software? And so I found uh, an algorithm that I, uh, that I wrote. And, and I started to slowly but surely build on this uh, piece of trading software, which initially was called uh, the Price Action Pro. And then now it's just called uh, the Supply and Demand uh, Indicator or, or Tool. Uh, and it focuses on 
on finding these uh, kind of release points. And so you have, I mean, price cannot move up and it can't move down uh, because of um, uh, filled orders. It's only moving my optic and what I've um, uh, seen while working at the banks uh, due to unfilled orders. And so price will typically uh, move in a direction of thinnest liquidity and it'll stop when it bumps into these pools of liquidity, which are typically, um, as an example, uh, limit orders um, or stop orders at the opposing sides of the market. And so when stop orders are hit, uh, they dump liquidity into the market um, and this liquidity is typically bought up by the people who are in the know and this drives the market in the in the uh, in the opposite direction, uh, which is why the whole concept of um, um, I think there's a term like stop running. A, a lot of people refer to in the markets. It makes perfect sense, and it's not because. Do you um, know my Do you know my Twitter handle? I do actually. I do. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I think I know what you're talking about now. Today it's done by algos and black boxes, yep. HFT, but. Uh, when I was on the floor and there was open outcry, it was actually audible. And you're right, uh, people would drive the market, they'd be long going into buy stops, and when buy stops were elected, that was a liquidity for them to get out of their longs and even reverse. So yeah, exactly. it still happens. It, it will never stop happening. That's right, and it's, it's not the broker that's against the, um, uh, the customer, the retail trader, it's just the market um, me, uh, moving, breathing, um, and so it has to happen. Price has to find liquidity in order to move, and so that's ultimately what's happening when people stop gets hit. That's why you'll see price often um, kind of uh, push through uh, a significant high or a low, and this is done because there are typically uh, uh, stops there, and this will cause dump the liquidity in the market, um, and then this is kind of uh, gathered up by the opposing side of the market, which drives price um, uh, towards their target. Um, so I yes. see on the bottom you have your uh, is a hypnotic currency strength uh, histogram. So tell yeah. us how you use it. Um, well, I use this pretty much for um, uh, divergence purposes. Where you can, I mean, this is just showing me the difference in the strength between the the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that when we had this high here, we had kind of a like a nice push. So we had. Um, we had demand for the franc and supply of the, the Japanese yen. So price came up here. So we formed this height. And then we had a really strong push up into this. You can see this orange area, wow. which is weekly supply. But you had and a smaller reading on the histogram. So was that exactly. a divergence to you? Yeah, so that's a divergence. And so okay. when this happens, um, I mean, you don't just take every divergence trade. You have to be uh, taking divergence trades if that's what you trade. Um, if there's if price is reacting on something, just trading, I think, in the middle of black space or white space um, is not such a good idea. And so, I mean, this is just confirmation that there's um, a high likelihood, the probability that price will um, have a bit of a bounce here. Um, and it did. And we had a really nice release. And then we have these lows here. People are probably going to have their lows uh, pretty, uh, sorry, their stops close to these lows here. Price challenged those lows yeah. and price started to drift a little bit higher. And so, I mean, I look at this, uh, strength to me is a secondary tool. I use it for for divergence. Also, if I'm trading on a smaller time frame, then I'll go to, for example, a monthly chart or, or a weekly chart, which I spend a lot of time on. And then I'll look for uh, kind of trends going on on these time frames. And then I'll take this information with me down to the smaller time frames where I'm going to typically um, be be placing orders. Okay, um, you have uh, you have a lot of horizontal lines here. So, um, how do you know which are they different time frames, and how do you know which ones are going to be significant if you have so many of them? Yeah, well, let me clean it up a little bit. There are kind of a lot going on there. Let me. <clears throat> Okay, so I mean, this is just showing the um, uh, supply and demand areas on the on the weekly chart, um, and we have dotted ones here, and these are areas that have been visited. Um, the first visit happened here. This is a second visit. This is a high probability short. This is a lower probability, um, 
a supply and demand kind of also goes a little bit against uh, support and resistance where if price comes up to a level and tests it multiple times um, it doesn't mean it's stronger according to supply and demand liquidity it means that it's getting weaker because the pools of liquidity at that level are diminishing each time price uh, penetrates an area and so each time price comes up to this area I want to know if price has been there before it almost came there here uh, we got to there here and we came here and so each following time the next time I probably will not consider to trade this ultimately you want to see price enter an area and retrace aggressively which shows us that there was uh, indeed a uh, bearish liquidity here so if, but if price is coming let's go to a different time frame let's go to the pound so if price is doing actually the euro there's something I wanted to show on the euro here quickly Okay, so if price kind of comes down to uh, an area like this and it's been tested and then the indicator drew this little rectangle um, just here and this is important because price came down we had a really strong push here and then price for um, several hours sat on this area and what is pro what's going on there well this is um, um, this is the accumulation of orders to, to move price lower and you know this once price leaves and the indicator told me this said yes we have a four hour area of supply at this area and so this is the trade that was taken uh, at this area here okay um, and so, so now let, let's not go backwards let's continue so here we are now with a potential double triple bottom getting a reversal candle um how do you play a move like this uh, what would be your expectations for a move in euro now um, well, if I look at this, you can see that we've we've been down to this level here before, and so first of all, I'll mark off the lowest retracement, which is here. And so, once this once price moves back to this level here, and, and if we're not trending, when price starts to move against and move towards this, I don't want to be buying until price comes to at least uh, beyond the lows of this, because price has already cleared out liquidity. At this level price turned it went down and it turned from here and started to move higher so the buy zone starts here and if you look here you can see we have some micro four hour areas here um, price tested the edge of it nicely and it tested it held the second test as well so price is reacting so we'll probably get um, depending on what happens here if price continues to um, accumulate uh, around this area here I'll be very hesitant to buy because uh, this would make me believe the price is going to have another push lower um what would make like to, you believe that um just like um um the behavior of price if price is stuck around this area here and we get these small these small yeah. bodied candles at a key I level okay. yeah i would be very hesitant in uh um for example buying so i want to so wait and see yeah, what you have more of a bias to sell it on strength and uh what what um uh, pivots would be important to you um let me clear the charts off a little bit and I'll just do it like a like an analysis I, I mean I, yeah I, I hope you don't mind but you no, know, not at all it's it's easy, it, you know this was this happened then and then that happened and then this happened well what's happening now man you know in this business you're only as good as your last call exactly I'm gonna show you okay. this is what I'll do I'll start on the week on the monthly chart as, as, right. as far up as I can get and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna see what's gonna happen you can see First of all, I asked my price, I'm sorry, myself. Um, what are we looking current? at? This is the, the euro, dollar, and this is the monthly chart. Okay. So I'm asking Got it. myself, I mean, what's driving price? And so you have to identify um, the most recent uh, area of supply on demand that has, the price has reacted at. And you can see, you can't see it here, but we have a micro area of uh, demand down here. And I can see this because um, just the way these wicks uh, look here. And if you have a look, and I'm going to zoom in. And if you have a look here, you can see that we had an area of uh, demand price released. It went up, it came down. And so this is a pullback. And what does a pullback uh, mean? Well, to me, a pullback means that we're flushing liquidity. And so if price manages to come all the way back down here, then I don't want to be paying a price any more expensive than the low of this pullback. This is a nice, strong push higher. 
This is a less strong, we have a pullback. This is telling me the edge of the buy zone begins at the low of this candle. So if we go back to current you mean price, currently, currently? Currently, yeah. Okay. And so this is what price is reacting on now. So we can... So what is can, that level? Um, that's the, oh, it's difficult to see on the screen. The one zero, you know, I'm just gonna go, I can't see my screen resolution is pretty okay. high. Okay, the one, it's the, the 0, 0,360. Oh, the lows. Yeah, that's the lows. Yeah. Okay, so that's so what you, uh, So that's you're what saying they're supported at the lows. Exactly, exactly. What is, so do you think we're going to attack that support, or do you think that was a bottom? Um, well, let me, let me finish my, uh, my analysis here. Um, so price is reacting here, and then I'm looking at what price did when it, when it went through there. You can see that price had a, had a test here, and then it moved away. And so I want to have a look at this leg high here. So this is the origin of this move. So I want to have a look at this. Um, and I'm going to have a look at the move up here. So you can see that we have the origin, which is down here. And this is the origin because, I mean, price went up and we tested it a couple of times. This is not a very impressive move. Price didn't leave from the area very quickly. So I would expect price to come down through this area and retest the absolute lows that we can see here. Um, but for the time being, you can see we have, we had market structure, which I actually, I can draw here, can't I? Pen. I'm just gonna draw here. So I'm gonna try and draw these swings. They're not very clear. So you go up and down and up and down. And so if I want to draw a defined market structure, the structure of price, I'm going to take the most, the clearest swing points like so. And we have one here and we have one here. So I'll remove these. Oops. And now I'm going to take a trend line. I'm going to draw it from here to here, roughly. It's not a perfect science like that. And then price went up. And so we had um, price managed to break the structure of market. And so you have to ask yourself, well, what area of supply caused market structure to fail? It's this one did here. So this is the area here that is interesting uh, to me initially, initially. And so we have this area of weekly uh, supply that's driving price. So this is this is big. I mean, weekly supply is big. We had it's a really strong move. When price left here, we managed to move through. First of all, we have this, which is, this is nice, fresh demand. So I'm expecting price to come down to the 114.40ish area. We'll have a bounce. But keep in mind that just below, we have this one here. So we have a couple of, let me remove the rectangles. So I have to do the work myself. Goody. We have, we have another one here. Good. And so price went up. We're approaching this one here. I like this one here, but it's not too clear. So I'm going to go to the smaller time frame. I'm going to have a quick look there and see what's going on. And you can see here that within so here. So you're, you're always yeah. looking left. Yes. Okay. And so if you look here, here we had that pullback. We had a strong move and we had price coming back. What does that mean? Well, to me, that means I'm not going to pay a price any more expensive than the, oh, I can't see, I'll, I'll tell you what, you get over 40, your eyes start to fall to pieces. Um, let's see, the 112.94. So that's an area that I would be very interested in buying. So that's my, my low there, just down here, around the, the 11300 area, okay. close enough. Um, and this is interesting because we have this little area here. And this one is a little bit messy because if you, if you focus on supply and demand, you have, to, you have to know that if price is moving sideways like this, well, that means that there's a balance in supply and demand. And that's what you don't want to see. You want to see an imbalance. You want to see price rally, accumulate, and then leave quickly. You want to see very, very quick approaches and very quick departures. If price is hanging around in the area like it is here, then I'm going to feel much more inclined to look lower, which is why I didn't draw this area off. I drew this one here. And so you can see the price, let me zoom in, it's not very clear maybe. So price, we left here, we went higher, we came down, we tested it, we came up. You see there's a lot of, a lot of 
um, agreement in the price of the euro USD at this level here. So price is pretty busy accumulating, price pops up, but we have this here. So we had price that came back to this area. Oh, damn it, my eyes. Could have changed those colors, which is the one. Okay, buddy. One, one ten fifty. Why don't we do this? Um, now's a good time to show your website. Uh, I went to your site, a nice looking site, and uh, what you have to offer to people and how they get uh, in touch with you, Suri. Mm hmm. Uh, that's 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 totally fine. Let me um before I do that, I just want to show you a nice little, make you a nice little commercial. Yeah, good. Before I do that, I just want to show you some uh, some results. Oh, okay. Um, this is over the past what account is this? The eighty eight. This is the past uh, one and a half months uh, of trading. Um, got a, got quite a few accounts. I shan't spend too much time. Um, but I like like you said, uh, you like to scale into positions. Um, this is something I'm doing uh, more and more because I, ultimately I like to get a better and better price um, uh, for whatever I'm I'm trying to buy. And so you kind of drop in a, a a slice of an order. You see how it goes. If price keeps moving against you, though, ultimately you want to uh, try and get in at a better price. Okay. And so um, and, and so this is what I'm I really really try to do. Um, and you can do if you trade supply and demand and you and you spend, of course your your time on the major time frames, so you know what is driving price, which is absolutely crucial, which is ultimately um, the economic data, so the interest rate swaps, uh, swap differentials and stuff like that. Mm. And you do your analysis, you find out, okay, we know that on the weekly chart, uh, we should be buying. You take that information with you down to the hourly chart or the four hour chart, whatever chart is that you want to, um, that you want to trade on or you're trading on, and you have a bias. And this bias is ultimately what is gonna enable you to get uh, much uh, better results. Um, okay. So you can you can see here. I mean, this is the past uh, just under 500 trades, and we have a um, a hit rate of 99.4% I mean, uh, uh, on the on the shorts and 80% on the longs. Um, so we have a lot of a high degree of um, uh, accuracy here. We have another account here, um, 326. Um, as a matter of fact, this algorithm or well, not this algorithm, but this method of trading is something that, that I've attempted to automate. And so I have a robot running on a small account. I'm just gonna show the results. This is a small live account. And, and here we have uh, the past uh, three weeks of trading. Um, it's 100% automated, um, a, a tremendous uh, profit factor, 10% uh, within the past almost three weeks. And we have a really good um, a hit rate on our trades here. Um, we have very small drawdown under a, a percent so far. Um, and so the whole the whole way of identifying these key areas in supply and demand can be done, of course, using code, uh, which is what I've done. And the software that I that I write um, is exactly what everything is based on. So the engine comes from discretionary tools that I showed earlier on. And and this is the website where um where I operate. So if you if you're interested, you can come here and you can have a look around. Uh, we do a lot of um I, I write a lot of blog posts about uh, various things, typically supply and demand and currency strength. But I also have my my algo trading uh, projects, uh, video blogs and stuff like that in here as well. So it's um it's a pretty um uh, exciting environment. I mean at heart I am a programmer, um but I think the the financial markets are a, a splendid way to kind of express that creatively. And I think I think it's um. It's it's a very uh, fun travel. It's a very fun trip. Uh, yeah, outstanding trading, Sarit. So, uh, what do you do? You sell a copy of the robot for people to trade. What's your business model? No, it's um, it's like a monthly subscription uh, okay. for the software. Yeah, and so we okay, have. Got it. Yeah, and that's it. And so you mean the currency strength tools and the supply and yeah. demand tools. Um, okay. The, the current the robot is not. I'm not. You know, liability not issues affected. and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're not okay. I understand. Yeah. I mean, even the robot in Lost in Space broke down on Will Robinson and Dr. Smith, and you know, I'm sure yeah. I, you don't remember the television show, but uh, that's the only robot I really cared for. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. it was great. It was great meeting you, buddy, and uh, congratulations on uh, you know 
finding your way into trading by accident. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, you know, all it's the good things exciting. in life are accidents, aren't they? That's right. As a matter of fact, um, as you might uh, recall from our correspondence, uh, we're in the process of moving to, uh, to Indonesia. Currently, I live in Copenhagen in Denmark, and I'm yeah. gutted that it's 1-1 one, one, Aussie Denmark. Uh, oh, oh uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, if you manage to, to harness uh, the beast, tame the beast, then you can, you can do live whatever anywhere. you want. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. we're moving to Indonesia uh, in about three weeks, so we're... We're, We're all about. dying of stress at home. Uh, the island of Bali. Um, there's oh a my school God. there. Yeah, there's a school there. Check it out. There's a school there called the Green School. Um, and this school is very uh, much focused on sustainability, all the way from uh, from the kindergarten class and all the way up to the 18-year-olds at high school. It's a phenomenal school, and it's it's situated in in the middle of the jungle uh, in Bali. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's completely phenomenal. So we went there. We spent the winter there last year. We visited uh -huh. the school and we said, fell in love. Yeah, we were a bit like, we have to get our kids into this school. So we started to fill out the paperwork and, um, and uh, yeah, the sun shone on us. And so, yeah, so we, we're selling everything we own and, uh, and we're heading out in three weeks. So um, there's a trader, not risk averse and stay comfort, leave your comfort zone. Oh, so, absolutely. So live in the dream. So Reed Harper, uh, get in touch with him at Pipnotic on Twitter and check out his website and very nice to meet you buddy you're now my trading warrior brother my pleasure dale thanks so much for having me all right enjoyed it uh thank you so much and may your program and people that use it and your tools may pips rain down on them as <laughs> they do and and you and your family in the jungle <laughs> thanks so all much. right buddy all right all everyone face thank you again and everyone, that's a wrap. I'll see you for TGIF. And remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone tomorrow. Thank you again, Sarid. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks Adios. Cheerio.